This is Katherine Nightingale at Chattanooga State Community College. This video is for Math 2110 Calculus 3 on Section 13.1. We'll be discussing functions of several variables. A function of two variables is a rule that assigns a number to each ordered pair x, y in its domain. So what you've seen before is single variable functions where you have a domain with just a single variable x and a range with a single variable y. Here our domain is going to be from the xy plane and our range will be the z value of the function. So in this first example we have z equals the function um, of xy that's defined by the square root of x squared plus y squared minus 4. And what we want to do is find and sketch the domain of the function and find the range of the function. So for the domain, you want to think about what type of function you have and what are the possible inputs for that function. Now, since we can't take square root of a negative number, the domain is going to be everything underneath that square root must be greater than or equal to zero. So we have x squared plus y squared minus 4 is greater than or equal to zero. Now, I want to get this into a format that I'm used to graphing, and so I can see with the x squared plus y squared, that will give me a circle, but I want to figure out the radius, so I add 4 to both sides and I get x squared plus y squared is greater than or equal to 4. So that's going to be my domain of the function. Now I want to graph this and so um, I'll put it on my xy plane and I know that that circle has a radius of 2 so I'm going to draw in my circle of a radius of 2. Now the issue is that x squared plus y squared has to be greater than or equal to 4, meaning that we're talking about the outside of the circle, and with an inequality, remember, you shade in whatever area you're talking about. And so what we'll have is we'll have this whole area outside of the circle shaded in, and that includes the circle because we have the or equals to in the domain. So there's our graph of the domain of f of xy. Now for part two to find the range of f of xy, what we want to do is consider the type of function that we're dealing with. So anytime you're dealing with range, consider the type of the function. We're dealing with a square root in this case, and we know that the output of a square root is always greater than or equal to zero. And so a square root has a range greater than or equal to zero. So our function has a range of z greater than or equal to zero. So it all comes down to the type of function. For the d domain, you're looking at what can the input of that function be. And for the range, you're looking at what can the output of that function be. So you'll want to review your different types of functions from pre-calculus and um, think about what the, their domains and ranges are. Okay, now before we go on to the next part of this problem, I want to take a minute and actually graph the function to see what it looks like. So I'm going to go to Wolfram Alpha and I'll type in um, plot z equals square root of x squared plus y squared minus 4 and I get my 3D plot. Now look at this graph. You know that you have this domain where you can't have anything inside of the circle of radius 2. With Wolfram Alpha, they, do, they show that by making it a solid red instead of having the lines like the rest of the function has. So the function is not defined in this circle of radius 2, 
since the inside of the circle is not in the domain. And this is how Wolfram Alpha shows it, is by doing the solid red. So note that any time you go on um, to their site and graph a function. Okay, the next part of our um, definitions is a boundary point. So a boundary point of a region R may or may not belong to the region. And a point X naught Y naught is a boundary point of R if every disk centered at X naught Y naught contains points, points both inside and outside of the region. Okay, so I'm going to put our graph of the domain here so that we can um, refer to it. And we'll just call that region R because that's what we're using in the de definition. And we know that every disk centered at X naught Y naught has to contain points both inside and outside of R in order for a point to be a boundary point. So let's look at this point right here, just any random point on the circle X squared plus Y squared equals 4. Now if I make a little disk around that point, you can see that that disk includes points both inside the domain and outside of the domain. So blue shaded points and non shaded points. So this is going to be a boundary point since a disk around it contains po points both inside and outside of R. Now the boundary of a region is the set of all boundary points. And we know that every point on the circle is a boundary point because it, if we put a disk around it, it will contain points inside and outside of the domain. So the boundary of the domain in this case is x squared plus y squared equals 4. So it's actually that circle um, and your boundary always uses equality. So when you're talking about a boundary, you want some function that defines the boundary. Now we want to define a closed or open region. A region is closed if it contains all of its boundary points and it's open if it contains no boundary points. So it is possible sometimes to have a region that's neither open nor closed because it might contain some boundary points but not others. But in this case, um, if we look at our graph, we know that the boundary was the circle of radius 2 and our domain was x squared plus y squared greater than or equal to 4 and that includes the circle because of the or equal to. So in this case the domain actually includes its boundary so the domain is closed. Now if I had had a strict inequality then it would have been an open region. It would not have contained any boundary points even though the boundary would still be the circle if it was a strict inequality, that would not be part of the domain. Last definition, a region in the plane is bounded if it lies inside a disk of fixed radius. A region is unbounded if it is not bounded. So let's look at our domain again. And we know that this shaded part goes out forever in every direction. It's going to be out in the x and y and diagonally infinitely in every direction. So in this case, the domain is unbounded because it cannot be contained in a disk. It's infinite in this case, so we couldn't put some lasso around it that would contain it. And so it's unbounded. So those are the five things you want to look at when you're looking at um, the domain of a two-variable function. You want to look at the domain, the range, 
and then whether the domain is um, bounded or unbounded, closed or open, and then what is the boundary. So those are your five points that you'll be asked to look at for each of these functions. Let's do one more example where you can see these five parts coming together. So example two, we have z equals the function of x and y defined by natural log of 1 minus x squared plus y. Okay, now since the input of natural log must be positive, the domain is going to be 1 minus x squared plus y is strictly greater than 0. Now we want to get this into a form we can graph, and so I'm going to basically leave the y where it is, move everything else to the other side of the equation. So we get y is greater than x squared minus 1. And notice this is a strict inequality, so the parabola is not actually part of the domain. I'm going to put my points for graphing the parabola. And then with this strict inequality, the parabola is not part of the domain, so I'm going to have a dotted line for graphing my parabola. Remember, a dotted line in graphing means that it's a boundary but not actually included. And now I want y to be strictly greater than that parabola, so I'll be shading above the parabola. So there's my domain shaded in blue. So for that function, natural log of 1 minus x squared plus y, the domain is that inside part of the parabola, and it expands upwards as the parabola goes up. Now we want the range of the function, and remember for range, we need to focus on the type of function. We have a natural log function, and the range of natural log is all real numbers. It's going to hit every possible positive and negative and zero. It will go through all of them. Now, the way that I know this is because I can think of the basic graph of y equals natural log of x, back from pre-calculus 1. So my basic graph of natural log looks like this. I know that the domain doesn't go um, below zero, but the range goes all the way down and all the way up. So my range is negative infinity to infinity. So you really just have to know your graphs from pre-calculus to know the domains and ranges. Okay, now let's look at the boundary and whether it's opened or closed and bounded or unbounded. Okay, so we want to find the boundary of the function's domain. So here's my function's domain. And the boundary, if I put any point on that parabola and put a disk around it, the disk will include points both inside and outside of the shaded region. So that's a boundary point. Every point on that parabola will be a boundary point. And so the parabola is my boundary. So the boundary of the domain is y equals x squared plus 1. And remember, the boundary always uses an equal sign. Now we want to know whether the region's open or closed or neither. Since the domain does not include any of its boundary points, it is an open region. So because we had the dotted line for the parabola, it's open. And then bounded or unbounded. So we can't contain the domain in a disk because it the domain goes up forever. The parabola keeps going up and out. And so the since it can't be contained in a disk of fixed radius, it is unbounded. Okay, so those are your five basic parts that you look at. Remember, domain comes from what can the input be. Range comes from what is the output of the function. And you want to think back to your um, basic functions from pre-calculus.
and then the boundary is basically the edge of your domain opened or closed has to do with whether you contain the boundary or not in your domain and um, bounded or unbounded has to do with whether your domain expands infinitely or not.